There we go. Best I could start there. Must unmute myself, Phil. Uh, hi. Good uh, evening, good afternoon, or good morning, whenever you're listening, uh, watching this. Uh, my name is Phil from Radio.co, and welcome to my live webinar all about how to easily create a professional online radio station for your business. You know, how to make a private uh, radio station. After all, that's the reason you've uh, you've come to check it out. Uh, in this demonstration, I'm going to guide you through how Radio.co works fundamentally uh, and how you can set it up to effectively work alongside your business, uh, whether that is just to exist as a private internal radio station just for you and your employees, uh, or it's a public facing radio station designed to expand the reach of your business. Uh, OK, so first of all, all important question uh, for any employer looking into this industry, online radio, what is the appeal of launching an online radio station in the first place? Well, there are a couple of reasons for that. So first of all, for you as an employer, online radio is incredibly easy to set up and also manage. Uh, so even with a workforce and obviously a full-time job to juggle, uh, you can actually leave your station to manage it itself, particularly if you are using radio.co. Um, simply tell the software what you want it to do, and it'll do it. Regardless of how much you want to broadcast and set it up, it's all, honestly, uh, it doesn't need much equipment either as well. So, um, you know, to get started anyway. So just a mere laptop and an internet connection is good enough to get you started because, you know, if your business no, not affiliated with radio at all, then yeah, rest assured, you actually really don't need anything. Uh, you can obviously use online radio to reach anyone from anywhere in the world. So whether your workforce is, I don't know, all office-based, abroad, across multiple locations or even countries, or like what we seem to be doing a lot these days, working from home, all it takes is an internet connection and a URL to listen to it. And on the flip side of that, if you're a business owner looking at a new creative way of reaching your customers, uh, then again, it's never been easy to set up an online radio station to provide a 24-7 stream of content and advertising. Uh, again, whether it's something that just plays throughout your office or store, or it's something you offer as maybe a mobile app so people can tune in throughout the day anytime they like. Ultimately, though, whatever you have planned for your business-orientated online radio station, the appeal of it is that it's incredibly simple to set up, manage, and broadcast. So there really is no reason why you shouldn't consider indulging. And I'll get into that very, very shortly. Uh, so onto the demonstration. Over the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to guide you through uh, the software to show you exactly how our platform works uh, to really prove to you just how simple, professional, and innovative our platform is to truly make the most of your team and your time. Uh, I'll also highlight some effective ways you can use our software to communicate with and entertain your workforce, as well as offer advice on how to very easily use what we offer to reach customers outside of your usual four walls. After the demonstration as well, I'll answer some questions that have been sent to me already. And if you have anything you'd like to ask about our software or your business, uh, then please write them in the comments section or the chat box wherever you are watching, and I'll answer as many as I can. Uh, also, if you can't attend the full demonstration, don't worry, it will be available on demand when I have uh, finished. OK, so where are we? So uh, you should be able to see my demo screen here. Um, so this is what I'm going to use to demonstrate how the software works. And this is what you will see every time you log into your account. And to actually create your account, it really just takes a couple of minutes. Uh, so again, working around that busy lifestyle you have, just create an account and log on. Um, now, again, you don't need an almighty powerful computer to run this. Um, you know, I don't know what facilities are like in, in, in the offices that you work in. Uh, but yeah, all you need is an average Windows or Mac computer and an interconnection at uh, best. Uh, maybe if you plug a microphone in, a USB powered microphone into your computer, if you want to do some talking on it, that's it. That's as good, good as anything, really. That's what you need to, to get on air. Very, very simple. Now, you can turn your station on here and turn it off. Uh, again, depending on what your focus is for your business radio station, you can um, turn it on and keep it on 24-7, uh, or you can turn it on and turn it off every time you uh, you know finish for the day, maybe, but it's totally up to you. Um, as I said, it's all cloud-based. Nothing needs installing or downloading. Just log into your radio.co account from any computer you are uh, using. Uh, and here, uh, information at the top, this is for live broadcasting. So if you ever want to uh, get uh, yourself involved or your colleagues involved in doing maybe a, um, a, you know, a live show, maybe a live show every Friday afternoon or something or something a bit different. So whether it is for entertainment or, um, you know, uh, sort of training purposes, you know, uh, just for communication within your office, you can actually broadcast live. And again, it really doesn't take much time or effort to, to set up. As long as you have your internet connection and a microphone, if you want to uh, do a bit of talking, hit this download broadcaster. 
or you use your connection details in a third party software called But, uh, if you're a Mac user, that is. And what you do is you open this up, get connected. Once this says connected, that's it, you're live on air. And you can use that to communicate with your team or just entertain your team. Uh, likewise, if you are turning this into uh, a more of a public facing uh, radio station for your business, then yeah, you can reach audiences and potential customers from all over the world. Uh, this information here will be relevant depending on whichever plan you subscribe to. So we have five subscription plans. Each of them will give you all the basic tools of uh, getting started, even our uh, most cheapest plan. Um, but they all offer different allowances like storage space for your content, uh, listeners and bandwidth. Not so much of a concern if it's just a private internal radio station, but if you want to appeal to a global audience for your business, then that is something to consider. Um, and then this just shows you what's currently going on in your station. So here I've got a couple of music tracks and a couple of shows that I have scheduled. So media, this is probably where you'll go first, and this is where you upload your content. And this can be absolutely anything you like, um, you know, music, uh, podcasts, interviews, uh, training sessions. You know, I know a lot of people that are using our platform for businesses, and they just use their online radio station as an alternative source uh, resource for training uh, new staff members or just updating uh, on business news. Uh, so this is where you go. You go to add media where it says browser, click on select files, and that's where you can upload your content. And like I said, it can be anything you like, as long as it's MP3 or AAC. Upload them, and they'll all appear in a long list uh, like this. Now you'll see as I scroll down my tracks, uh, there are uh, a number of them that have these brightly colored labels attached to them. And they're what we call tags. Um, now, these can be used any way you like. They're ultimately a way of organizing your media first and foremost. So on my generic music station, I've separated these tracks in terms of pop tracks. I think I've got some adverts here, some rocks, some podcasts, R&B. Now, of course, that this is for my public facing website. So if you uh, public facing radio station, sorry. So, you know, if I wanted members of the public from all over the world to listen. Maybe I want to tag these tracks just to help me understand exactly what I've got, you know, how many R&B tracks, I've got how many podcasts I may have. Um, but this can still be very, very handy for uh, an internal private radio station. Maybe you've uploaded certain training seminars um, or um, just a shout out, a little, you know, messages of encouragement, you know, a bit of entertainment for the team. Um, but on, on the first one, maybe if you've got some training seminars or announcements that you want to separate in terms of when they were available, um, then this is how you would do it. So I'm going to highlight these tracks. And so maybe these were short training sessions that we recorded in April 2021. You know, we recorded them today, for example. What I do is highlight them here. At the top here, it says add and create tag. And I'm just going to create uh, training 2021. April, make it a bit more obvious. Click on add. And what it would do is it will then create that tag and attach it to those tracks. So now I know that's how many tracks I've got in my training April 2021 folder. And if I go to the tags option on the left, you will see a list of all the tags you've made and how many tracks are associated with each one. So again, I know I have three tracks I've uploaded as part of my training for April 2021. But you can create any tag you like. It's totally up to you. And I have a couple of features here, which may or may not be uh, that useful for you, depending on what your focus is. We have the recordings folder. Uh, if you're doing any live shows, whether it is maybe a live um, conference call you may be doing, you know, we'll, we'll go into conference calls a little bit later. But if you wanted to record it, then you can schedule your live broadcasts to record. So as soon as you come off air, you will have an MP3 file of that entire show. So here's a show that uh, one of my colleagues, Graham, did on the 15th of April. You can see when he finished his show and uh, the entire duration of the uh, file here. I can then download the recording or maybe upload it to podcast.co, which is our sister company. So if you want these sessions to be available on demand somewhere, if they missed it live, then great, you can do that. Uh, voice tracking, this is a great tool. Um, and this is a tool that you'd expect to find in any typical radio station. It just allows you to record vocal content up to 10 minutes in length. You can record as many as your story space allows you to. And yeah, you can use these in any way that you like. Again, if you're a public facing radio station for your business, why not record a couple of short commercials for your station or, um, you know, create a fun music show um, with a couple of 
uh, voice tracks in between it to give off the impression you're doing a live radio show. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, still, these are great to record 10 minutes of audio, whether that is a shout out to a, an employee, um, you know, a bit of entertainment for the team or again, training sessions, you know, record a short little tutorial for someone that they can just listen to anytime they need to. And again, these can be downloaded and stored on any personal computer or, um, you know, a hard drive. Um, and then we also have talk shows. Now, this is a great uh, feature that uh, is strongly, is seriously worth considering, particularly for, um, you know, for a private business or or maybe just any business that wants to uh, make the most of the talent that they have on the team. Talk shows you can do on any of our um, on any of our plans. What this uh, particular tool does is this is a more advanced, efficient way of recording talk shows with multiple people remotely. So um, you can see here, I've got one called a fill demo, which I'll open up. You can create this show. You will be assigned a URL for uh, your show and you can send this to your colleagues, your, your uh, co-hosts, essentially. They will click on that and they'll be taken to a green room while they wait for your instructions. You would click on start session. Choose the input device that you want to use, so microphone or headset or something like that. Click on this red microphone button and you'll then record up to 60 minutes. So this is a great way to easily record a remote podcast, essentially, or maybe a roundtable discussion or even just a conference. You know, get people logged on from their homes, from various um, you know, locations around the world, get them to log on, press record, and that's it. You're recording a conference call, essentially, just without using Zoom or Skype. You know, you're using radio.co to do it. So this is a fantastic tool and just available in our gold and our pro plans. And it's seriously something worth considering just how easy and how great sounding it is. And, and of course, any shows that you complete can be scheduled for broadcasting if needs be, or they can just be downloaded. OK, so playlists. This is how you'll build your shows. And this goes for any show, whether it's a music show you want to build or a talk show. You know, this is where you'd come. You'd come to uh, your playlist section. So here you can see a number of playlists I've made already. There is one here called the default playlist, and you will actually be given that when you create your account. Now, we've actually built this playlist to do a couple of important jobs. First of all, it's always there as an emergency fail safe. So if you are doing a live show or a live, again, live conference maybe, and your internet connection cut out while you were doing it, you can actually have a default playlist uh, work as a backup that will automatically fade in and take over. So your audience or your, you know, your workforce will never be left in uh, any awkward silence. The other job that it does, it will automatically fill in any gap in your schedule. So whether that is music or advertisements or silence, but it will always fill in any gaps that you've left in your schedule for you. So you don't need to create 24 hours of content. So to build a playlist at the top here, it says new playlist. So I'm going to just call this one um, training seminar, something like that. Give it a color. That's vibrant purple. Click on the add button. And when you do, it will take you to your show builder or your playlist builder. So this is how you build your pre-recorded uh, shows. So here I'm just going to click on um, a couple of tracks here that I've uploaded that I want to be involved in my training seminar. So I've got a couple of podcasts and some interviews here that we want to play, totaling an hour and 40 minutes there. But I would also like a bit of music scattered throughout so we're not making the seminar quite so dry. But it's totally up to you. All you need to do is select the plus button next to every track you want to add into your playlist like so. Once they've been added to your playlist, get your mouse and just drag them around if you want to change the, the order of them. Right, so very, very easy, very straightforward. And there we go. And that's how you build a playlist. You can build it as long or as short as you want. It will always tell you how long that particular show is. And even if you only want to build a playlist that contains one track, you absolutely can. You're completely free to do whatever you like. Just build a playlist and then tell the software what time you want it to play. And I'll show you how to schedule that very, very shortly. Um, now, of course, if this is a more public facing um, uh, station for for customers or clients, or maybe this is just a, a, a private internal radio station meant purely to entertain your staff on a daily basis. Uh, then, of course, if I built this playlist and scheduled it regularly, my team would, I guess, arguably get a bit sick of what tracks are playing. So how do you prevent that? Well, you can use tags. It's those things that I showed you how to make before. So if I go to the tags tab here on the left, you will see a list of all the tags that we've made. However, now you can actually take them and drag them into this playlist. So let me go to the top here. I've got a 90s tag here. So I, if I take this 
like so, and maybe add it again over here. What the software will do is when it gets to this track in the running order, so track two, the software will play a random track that is associated with that tag. And the software will play every track within that tag once before it repeats any for a second time. So even if you put the same tag in back to back, it will always be random for as long as those tracks, you know, those number of tracks you have. If I have 100 90s tracks and I put this tag in 100 times in a row, each time it will be completely different. The 101st time will be a track that has played before. So this is great if you are playing this uh, radio station throughout your office or your store. It just means that those working and of course those visiting, but most importantly, those working in the office aren't getting sick uh, by the same order and the same kinds of tracks. Using tags makes uh, makes more variety appear, um, even though you you know if you don't add or remove any tracks in particular. So that's how you build a playlist, nice and simple, just drag and drop things in, add tags, and you can even build tracks completely built of tags. Um, I spoke to someone today, uh, and they just wanted to create very, very simple themed shows throughout various times of the day. And I said, well, a very, very easy way of doing that is by using a simple tag like that. I could place in one tag, schedule it for three hours, and for three hours, it will just keep playing a random 90s track back to back. And of course, the uh, order will be different every time I schedule it. Uh, recordings if you have any old live shows or you know live um talks webinars whatever and uh, just take the recording drag it into your show and there we go that's how you repeat it it's that simple uh talk shows as well if you've got a talk show you know a conference call that you've recorded take it drag it in nice and simple now voice tracks as i said this will let you record vocal content up to 10 minutes in length all you need is a usb microphone and an internet connection to do it nothing too fancy click on this microphone button then you'll see this red microphone button. If you cl uh, click on that, it will just ask you to confirm what device you're using, you know, so what microphone or whether it's inbuilt or uh, you know, it's on a headset or something. Click on this a second time and it'll then start counting backwards from 10 minutes. So you can see here, it's currently counting backwards and it's recording everything that I'm saying through my uh, microphone. So I can use this opportunity just to maybe give a shout out to the team, introduce a piece of music that's coming up next, or I can use this full 10 minute session to yeah uh, read from a report or uh, words of encouragement for the team, or just record my own version of the company news. You know, it's a, basically a mini recording booth built into the software. So it's something you should definitely look at using because I mean, well, it doesn't cost much time or effort to, to do it really. So it is definitely worth having to play around with. Click on stop. You can then listen back to it to make sure it sounds okay. If you don't like it, clear recording and start again, or you can just give it a name. So I'll just call this one Phil Welcome, something like that. Click on Create. It will then be saved here, and I can then move this around, and maybe it introduces this show that we're doing here. But that's you know that's how you build a playlist. Just choose the order, add what tracks you want into it, and now it's time to tell the software when we want it to play. So click on Save Changes. Oops, there we go. Click on schedule, like so. And what you'll see here is your schedule. So you'll see days of the week along the top, times down by the side. So as I scroll down, you will see everything that I have on my particular station. So I just have two shows. I have a live show nine till 12 and a live show six till nine. Now, as I said before, we have that default playlist, which will automatically fade in during any gap in your schedule. So there just so happens to be a gap here every day between 12 and six on my station. So what will happen? is as Alan finishes his show, the software knows nothing's coming up next and it will just crossfade my default playlist and it will then play on loop for as long as it needs to. In this case, six hours every single day. Um, if you really want, um, you know, the software to work for you and you have to, you know, not have to put too much time and effort into it. Some people actually leave their schedules completely blank and they just update their default playlist every week or, you know, every couple of days. You can do that as well. You know, just build one really great playlist that's varied, whether it is full of music or, uh, you know, business news. And just let the software play it for you, you know, without you actually having to do a single thing. Now, of course, you can schedule uh, specific shows at certain times. And to do that, click on the time you want it to start and drag it to the time you want it to finish. So I will do a show from tomorrow, two till four. So click on two in this case, and I'm going to drag it down all the way to four o'clock, like so. Now, when I let go of the mouse, I just need to confirm the information regarding this show. So you can see here, it starts at two o'clock, runs for two hours, therefore finishes at four. 
Now, currently, I've only got it scheduled for Friday, and maybe I only want this to be a Friday afternoon show once a week. That's all. And that's great. You can do that. You can also schedule it at the same time across various days of the week as well to save you having to do it each time. So I'll click on Tuesday, and it will schedule it for Tuesday, 2 till 4, Sunday as well, Wednesday, or every day. You can do the same on a weekly basis. Let us replicate it for you up to any date within the next two years. But I won't go that mad. I'll just select a 22nd of uh, April next year. Now, if I click on the advanced tab, this is where I decide what kind of show this is going to be. Event type. You may very well just only want to do pre-recorded shows. And that's great. Whatever you, you have plans for, you know, not everyone has the ability or even the time to commit to doing live shows, especially if it is a busy workplace and you just want to create a simple station for entertaining or communicating. So come to event type, click on playlist, and there we go. You just tell the software which playlist you want to play from this drop down menu. And I'm going to play training seminar. The whole team is aware that we're doing this training seminar on this particular day at this time. Click on create event and it will take a couple of seconds. There we go, like so. So now you can see starting from tomorrow, I have the training seminar playlist automatically playing at two. It will fade in at two and fade out at four. Simple as that. You know, just build a playlist. Uh, upload content, build a playlist and tell the software what time you want it to play. And it will do that. You know, it literally just takes a couple of minutes. Um, now, again, there's a gap either side. They will be filled by that default playlist. So whatever's in there will play. Um, but yeah, that's how you do a pre-recorded show. So if you ever wanted to do a live show, some people do want to do that. You know, it's a great way of getting colleagues involved in something just uh, that can be a little um, a little daft, a bit of bit of entertainment. Or, of course, um, you know, it's a great way of just getting, um, you know, uh, as I say, webinars or, or conference calls out on there. Click on event type, click on live DJ, tell the software which particular DJ, or which user this is going to be, because it's going to be expecting that particular person to be logged in, ready to go. So I will select myself here. This means I'm confirming to the software it's me that's logging in. And I would like to record the broadcast. So this, um, you know, this training seminar that we're doing will be available on demand for my colleagues uh, whenever it's finished. Click on update event. I'm going to update all the events I've made because even though I have scheduled it for 12 months of worth already, I can make as many changes to it as I like. And you can now see two till four, I'm going live. So I will get connected. I will log in. I will get connected via the broadcaster. And at two o'clock, I will fade in. And at four o'clock, I will fade out. If I have any technical difficulties, you know exactly what my backup playlist will be. And, you know, recording has been enabled. So I've got that. Um, that training session available on demand if people missed it when it was live. But that's how you do a live show. Just tell the software who's going live and what time. And as long as that person logs in, they absolutely will. There we go. That's all the programming, really. You know, you, as you can see, you don't need much time or an, an effort to dedicate to running the station. It may take a little bit of time uploading any content or initially building your shows. But you can see we can replicate it for you. We can even play entire shows for you without you having to really make any more than one single playlist. You know, it's totally up to you about how you use it. But it's an incredible, effective way of reaching and entertaining and communicating with your team or your customers, you know, if you are um, more of a public facing one. Right. OK. One of the main appeals for this seminar, I'm sure for you, is, um, you know, how how do people listen? And more importantly, I want this to be a private station. How do people um, listen to it when it's private? Well, to do that, I'm going to click on the uh, listen tab uh, here. Now, as you see, we mentioned about uh, privacy. So technically speaking, your um, your radio station will be private to a degree here. So because the only way people can listen to your station outright is by clicking on this URL. This is a unique listen link that's automatically assigned to you when you create your, uh, your radio.co account. Only people who have access to this will be able to listen. So if you only share it with a selection of 20 people, for example, only those 20 people should have access to to listen to it. If you don't make it public knowledge, people shouldn't find it. So this will be, as I say, by a, uh, technically a private by default. If you ever did want to make it available on other resources like an internet radio directory, you can do, like for example, like streamer here. People just need that URL to listen. Um, another way of doing it is by having a web player. Maybe instead of people clicking on this link, which opens up on a, uh, on a browser tab on their computer, maybe you want someone to go onto your company website or your intranet, maybe, to listen to your station like that. And this is um, 
how you can do that. You can build a web player, which will look something along the lines of uh, this. It will display any cover art that you've made available for any tracks, maybe uh, just a piece of artwork. Uh, but you could embed this onto your website. And then if you wanted to make it more private, maybe hide it behind something that's password protected. You know, that that's an alternative way of doing it. So, um, you know, we will give you you know, ways to make your station private, um, you know, out of the box. But if you want even more privacy, even more security, really, um, yeah, why not put this behind some sort of password protected uh, widget on your website? That's something we don't offer, unfortunately, but it is uh, an option uh, that is viable to you uh, that you should be able to find uh, on other services online. Just password protect. So only those, only your workforce with access to that can listen to your station. Um, another great tool, which maybe uh, could be really, really effective for, uh, for anyone that is uh, wanting to have a, a radio station for their business, for people to listen to, you know, customers and, and clients, um, is our request widget. This will actually let you embed a widget onto your website that will allow people to choose from a selection of tracks that you've made available. Anytime they select a track, it will come to the, uh, the request manager. If I click on this pretty garish color scheme here, but you'll be able to see people can select a track. It says a little welcome message and it will go into your uh, manager. And you can then use a tag called play request to automatically play tracks for you. So it's just a way of getting your customers involved uh, or even your, your staff. You know, if you just ask your staff to choose from a selection of tracks during the day and they will play. So it's great for whatever direction you want for your radio station. Um, before I move on, I'm just going to jump ahead to the settings just to continue talking about um, privacy and security, because we actually have a security tab here on your account within your settings. Go to security and there's a couple of extra measures you can put in place to reinforce that extra layer of security. First of all, we have geo protection. What that means is you can just geo lock your station so only people from certain countries can listen to your station, particularly if maybe you are a US based office and you only want people within the United States to listen to your station. You can set it up like this. So if I click on enter United States and countries, and turn this to allow, that means it will only allow IP addresses from the US to listen to your station. If I try to listen to your station from here in the UK, I can't. Alternatively, if you wanted every country in the world apart from certain countries, you can change it to block and that will do the reverse. That will allow people from all the countries except for the listed to listen to your station. Uh, there's another option here could block unknown locations if the software cannot determine where your audience is coming from. So, you know, the, the, the listener's IP address uh, is masking some information. You can turn that unknown block unknown locations on adds just an extra little layer of security so you oh, so the software will only verify people who are um you know you have allowed onto your station now even if you don't make your station public knowledge there is software available online that will search for um uh, for listen links and web um, web players um it doesn't happen very very often but it still is something that we do want to protect you against uh, it's called ripper protection and these are just a notorious number of uh, torrents essentially people you know services that look for unprotected streams that they allow people to, to listen to without your permission if you turn this on that just adds another layer of uh, defense to make sure people aren't stealing your stream and again there's another option here to block unknown agents and that will again just strengthen that a little bit more so there is more security precautions you can put in place but and there's also um you know password protected um uh, widgets that you can use uh, from other services uh, while i'm on settings um you might as well change this if i come to the broadcast tab here you can adjust a crossfade you know so how well your tracks flow into each other nice uh, you know nice and naturally here um your streaming quality can be uh, changed here all of our stations and plans will let you broadcast up to 192 and our pro plan will actually let you broadcast to 320. Uh, we have uh, advanced settings. If you are running your station more random through the use of tags, we actually have what we call separation rules. And this is, again, something to ensure your um, your colleagues, your, your workforce aren't getting too sick of uh, any tracks that play. And if it is music, this will just ensure the same artist isn't repeated too often in a row, even when playing tracks at random. Uh, we also have um, integrations. We have our own podcasting com uh, podcast. Uh, uh, sister company here, podcast.co. If you link your accounts to it, it means when you do finish something that's talk based, you know, a, a live, um, you know, a live conference, live webinar with your team, uh, why not upload it instantly as a podcast? If people missed it when it was um, uh, live, they can listen to it again. 
And we also have integration with Zapier that will allow you to link a Google Drive and a Dropbox account to your station so you can upload content via that way. Again, just more ways of uh, making it efficient for you. And we also have billing. Now, this can be used to upgrade and downgrade your plan as often as you like, whenever you want. But another thing I wanted to highlight billing is we actually offer um, a, a, another kind of plan. Uh, we don't advertise it on our website, but it is something that we can offer. It's called our enterprise plan. How that works is for if you plan to have multiple radio stations with us, maybe you have a business that has five different offices and you want a unique radio station for each of those offices. You know, it's all playing different kinds of music or different um different messages. Or again, maybe it's a restaurant or a shop that has different locations. If you sign up for multiple stations, we can put you on what we call an enterprise plan. It consolidates all of um, your month, your yearly payments into one. So you're not paying various amounts at different times of the month or the year. Uh, you just pay one annual monthly fee um, and um, we'll give you a discounted rate for them as well for the multiple stations. So if that is something you are interested in, just get in touch, drop me an email, studio at radio.co, and I can give you an idea on a quote of what uh, that plan may uh, consist of. Jumping back here, a couple of things that may be of interest. We have statistics. If you want to monitor how well your station is doing, particularly uh, if you, you're you running this station as part of your uh, business, you know, to drum more interest or, uh, you know, uh, to attract people when they're coming to your store to listen to your very own unique radio station. Um, here, this is where you can just judge how many people are listening, how long each person spends roughly listening to your station, uh, and also where in the world people are finding your station. You may not have offices or shops in these countries, but you know, they found your station and they're enjoying it. I will also show you how people are listening. So what web browsers or what devices they're using and also real time. If you want to just check whether everyone in the office is listening or um, you know who in the world is listening to your station right at this second, you can do. I've got three live audience members here. You can see exactly where they're based, uh, Germany, the UK and Argentina there. You can see when they started listening and uh, how long they've been listening for. We also have reports. This is primarily for licensing reasons. Uh, we don't keep, uh, we don't uh, provide licensing in any of our plans, unfortunately. So it would be something you would need to obtain yourself. Ultimately, if you plan to play copyrighted material, we do strongly advise you getting licensing in place just to make sure you've legally got the, the thumbs up to, to play uh, whatever you like. Um, this is where you'll come when you have got your, uh, your uh, license. Go to reports, track summary. And here I'm loading up the last 30 days of information and it will tell me exactly who's listening to my station, um, you know, how many times they've listened to each track here and how many times each track has played. You can download this report, send it off to your, your organization. They know who to pay in royalties. Um, now, uh, licensing rules can differ if you are a business um, or they could potentially differ anyway. So, um, you know, if you're keeping your station private, but you are playing copyrighted material, you may or may not still need licensing. It's always worth getting in contact with the licensing organizations for your country directly, and they'll be able to tell you everything that is um, uh, that is correct. Uh, if you go to our blog, actually, we have, and just type in licensing, we have a great couple of articles directing you to the right organizations for uh, particular countries, or just get in touch, drop me an email, studio at radio.co, and I'll point you in the right direction. Uh, we have add-ons. If you wanted to make the most of your station, maybe just expand or increase the ease of listening to it, you can build dedicated mobile apps, or maybe an easier way to have your station available in your office or your store is through an actual Alexa skill. You know, um, Amazon Echo devices are incredibly popular these days, and you can actually have your station directly streaming from those. It's available for $10 a month or £8 a month extra on top of your account. And yeah, you'll just simply ask Alexa to play your station and she will, you know, she's very well behaved most of the time. Um, yeah, so that's just an alternative, um, you know, way of listening to your station and something worth considering. And finally, users, this is how you manage people on your account. Whoever creates the account will be down as the owner. And rest assured, they're the only one who has access to billing information. So no other colleagues uh, that have access to your account can see that sensitive uh, information. Um, if you want people to help you manage the account or maybe do a live show, you invite them onto the account and each role has different levels of access. So not everyone will be able to do absolutely everything on the account. Um, so if I click on invite a user, I'm going to select uh, um, 
myself, my email address, what role you want me to have. So I'll say uh, DJ. That will just let me log in remotely and host a live show. Or maybe I want to be a music controller, which will allow me to go live as well still. But I can do voice tracking and I can also um, I can also upload content, build shows, you know, some, you know, someone you might trust a bit more. Click on invite. I'll get my own invitation and I'll get my own profile on the account so I can log in from any computer from anywhere in the world. So if you do want to spread out the responsibility of your station, then this is a great way of uh, going about it. Give people access to your account and they could maybe run it for you. It's totally up to you how you run it. Um, so that's kind of the end of the, the crash course there, really, everybody, in terms of how our software can work, basic functionality and looking through its, its potential capabilities as well in a way that, um, you know, whether you want it to be a private station or more of a public facing station to attract more customers, hope it's given you a better idea on what our platform um, is able to do and how you could uh, put your vision into it. Um, so as I said before, I'm going to uh, answer a couple of questions. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen here. Uh, say the sun has gone in a little bit, so I'm looking a little dark here. I apologize. I was nicely lit before. Um, so let me just share my um, my questions because I uh, we, we sent a couple of emails about, about this, um, this event and some of you did get back with a couple of questions here. So you should be able to see ones that I've uh, been asked so far. Okay, so um, so first of all, got a question here uh, from Darcy. She says, can I offer my online radio station as a premium paid service app? Of course, that's a great way of getting more revenue for your, for your business. Uh, the answer is yes, you can. Um, you can actually put it through a paywall service. Um, so first of all, um, we uh, we actually have a great article. If you type, go on our blog, type in a paywall or charge, um, and you'll be able to see a guide that James, is, our founder, has put together all about how to uh, set your Radio.co accounts with a paywall service called a DPD. That's one that we've worked with um, uh, in particular. And yeah, you can charge people a monthly rate of your choosing to listen to your online radio stations. Think of it just as a premium uh, service. Um, so that's something that you can do, set up very, uh, very simply, invite people to pay in order to access your station. An alternative way is if you do have an iOS or an Android app built through Radio.co, you can charge for them. We do need to be made aware when we are building the app so we can set a charge. But yeah, your apps don't have to be free. You can charge a small amount or any amount, really. Um, so, yeah, so another great revenue uh, stream there for you is through paywall or charging for your uh, mobile apps. Uh, oh, jumped ahead there. Um, so Felix has asked, can I broadcast our Teams and Zoom meetings? Um, yes, you can, Felix. I did mention uh, this a little bit earlier. So, uh, yeah, obviously, they are software that we've become incredibly familiar with, uh, particularly over the last 12 or so months. Um, and yes, the answer is yes, you can broadcast services and streams from these platforms onto your Radio.co uh, station. Um, the way you would do it, an easy way, it, particularly if you're a Mac user, is there's a piece of software called Audio Hijack or uh, Loopback. They're made by the same company. Um, and what you can do is um, these basically, Audio Hijack in particular, it acts it as a bit like a spider's web or a piece or laying pipe. Basically, you select various outputs, say, for example, a Spotify playlist or um, a link to your uh, Zoom meeting. And then you you basically create a, a pathway to um, your output, your Radio.co account. And what that does is that just allows to feed various uh, inputs into one single output. So you could have music playing on Spotify. You could have someone as a guest on your on your station or that you're doing a, a, a uh, just a meeting with through Zoom or Teams and then feed it through your radio station so people can hear absolutely everything. It's a really, really good, um, a pretty robust piece of software. It is, I don't think it's free. I think it's about $5, something like that. I could be wrong, but it's definitely something worth looking into. And Loopback uh, does something very, very similar as well. Again, they made by the uh, same company. Um, if you're Windows users, um, I'm not aware of currently of any particular software, good software that, that, that can do the same thing. Um, but what most people tend to do in this situation is they use a hardware, a hardware route instead. So maybe uh, they have a mixing desk plugged into the computer. Plugged into that mixing desk is a tablet or a mobile phone that has the Teams or Zoom meeting on. And of course, any audio traveling through that um, app will go through your mixing desk and go out live on air. So it's very simple to actually do. You just need either a software or hardware to do it. And best of all, it doesn't really cost that much money to actually set 
either uh, of those up. So I hope that's answered your uh, question, Felix. Um, Joe has asked, is it possible to create a radio station for a pop up event or exhibition for my business? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we've actually had quite a number of, um, you know, pop up and exhibitions um, using Radio.co over the last sort of few months. Doesn't matter how long you want to use Radio.co for uh, or online radio in general is such a beneficial and uniquely creative way of reaching audiences. And it can be a perfect um uh, you know, sidekick for things like pop up events or pop up stores. Um, you know, uh, you know, whether the various people all over the world are doing things like pop up events or rallies, um, you know, just, um, you know, pop up uh, temporary shops, things like that. You know, it's just a great way. All you need is, again, it's just a, an internet connection and a computer capable of streaming it. And that's it. Away you go. Um, so, as I said, recently, we've hosted stations for art galleries, such as at the Barbican uh, in London. They used Radio.co for about four months for um, three different uh, radio stations that they were doing for a, a soundscape uh, project. Uh, and then also we had a huge pop culture brand, Complex. Uh, they created an incredible digital festival uh, and they used Radio.co um, to uh, to uh, stream uh, about five or six stations through uh, that particular event. Um, so, yeah, they only lasted for, um, you know, that particular one lasted for just shy of a week or so. But still, you know, it doesn't matter how short your event is, it, it's because online radio is so easy to set up, particularly uh, through radio.co. Um, it's really worth considering regardless of how long you plan to use it. It just adds an extra layer of, uh, well, an, an experience for anyone, whether it is, you um, customers or um, your, your employees. It's just a great way of, of, of attracting intrigue if you are out in the street or, you know, in a particular shop. I hope that's answered your question as well, Joe. Um, C has asked, can people listen to my station on their mobile phones without the need of an app? Um, yes, they can. Um, so if you subscribe to at least our bronze plan, you can actually unlock mobile streaming. So that will allow anyone to click on that web player or that URL I showed you earlier. You can click on that and then listen to your station just through a mobile device without the need um, of an app. Uh, in doing that, though, however, it doesn't provide what I believe like a more professional and easy to use experience, because um, if you do click on that listen link just from a regular mobile phone without an app, um, it, the the stream of the, the browser tab needs to be open. If you close your phone off or go on another app, it will shut off the uh, the, the stream. So it doesn't work in the background. Um, as well, like mobile apps provide a certain level of legitimacy as well and trend, most importantly, for a business. Um, and believe it or not, they've actually proven to be a more attractive and efficient way to engage with audiences. People are more likely to respond to a call to action, like download our app now, opposed to, click on this big, long, ugly link here. Um, just having an app for your own business, it just sounds so cool in the eyes of the, the consumer or, you know, the business. So, um, yeah, so it's far more beneficial to have an actual dedicated branded app. That's the most important thing. It's branded as well. People will have on their, mo you know, iPhone home screens, a logo for your station or your company. So it's far more beneficial and trendy to have a mobile app for your business opposed to, um, just saying, you know, click on this link on your phone. It, it, it is possible to do see, but um, yeah, having an app is something that um, can be far more beneficial and has proven to be uh, more beneficial. Um, Debbie has asked, um, can I set the account up on my team's behalf and have someone take ownership of it in, in Airmarks? Um, yes, you can, Debbie. So um, whoever creates the account, They'll be assigned as the station owner, but that you may be setting up for a client. Maybe, you know, you're not the one who's going to be actively involved in it. You're just getting all set up on their behalf. And yeah, so all you need to do is I would assign someone else, the station manager, um, you know, the actual client, maybe you're building the station for. Um, they will take command of the station in terms of doing all the days to days. They just won't uh, have access to the billing information. If you do want them to just be the outright owner and you who set it up for them, you know, you don't want to have anything to do with it. Um, you can um, you can get in touch with us and apply for a change of ownership. We have to hear from the actual original owner of the account. And as long as you can prove you know, the security questions and who you want the new owner to be, we can set that up for you. Uh, and on that note as well, um, just I mentioned about billing is as well as paying by debit card and PayPal. Um, if you are a business and you would rather pay uh, as a bank transfer, that is something that we can do as well. If you do want to just keep your billing information a complete secret to everyone, you know, when you don't want it on our database, we can take bank transfer payments for annual um, subscriptions. So again, something just to, to consider there. 
And finally, the last question sort of uh, we got asked here, Christine, uh, can I take recordings of our shows and make them available on demand privately? We'll be recording a number of training sessions. Um, the answer is yes, Christine, uh, although not directly through uh, Radio.co. So as I mentioned before, if you do have any uh, you know, webinars or uh, conference calls and you want them available on demand, um, a great way of doing it is through our sister company, Podcast.co. Uh, we actually have um, a business plan um, which you can uh, subscribe to uh, through podcast.co's website. And uh, one of the fantastic features in that is actually private podcasting. Uh, that will allow you to share your podcast, you know, or in this case, your conference calls. It will allow you to share it with up to 100 subscribers, you know, private subscribers that you specifically um, choose. So if you really want recordings to be available on demand, but to be completely private and only accessible to select users, the podcast.co business plan will allow you to to do that through private podcasting and um, you can find out more about that um you can go to radio.co forward slash podcast to find it there or just go directly to uh, podcast.co or send an email uh to uh, hello at uh, podcast.co uh okay so i've got a, a couple of minutes left just to answer a couple of questions here guys um so uh jack my uh, my lovely assistant in the background has put a couple uh, in my chat box here so let's have a look. A couple of questions here. Um, Josephine has asked, can you repeat the name of the broadcasting software you used, uh, but in particular? Yes. So um, sorry, Josephine, I do talk quite uh, quite quick. I do apologize. Um, so but it stands for broadcast using this tool or yeah, the acronym but is what you'll see used um, displayed at, at most of the time. Um, it's a very simple piece of software, very similar to how our radio.co broadcaster for Windows works, except as um, as I showed you before on my demo screen, um, you will need to use um, a specific host port and password, which will all be available on um, from your radio.co dashboard. Um, if you want to find out more about how it works, um, go to help.radio.co, type in but, B-U-T-T, -T, and you'll find a help guide there. It's also available on our university as well, but that will show you exactly how to connect to but. It may be an extra piece of software to download, but it's it's very, very simple to use, uh, very, very quick and easy. Uh, but yeah, there will be a, um, a help guide about it there. Um, Terry has asked, uh, do I still need a PRS, an Ofcom license, even if it's for a private station? Uh, first of all, you won't need an Ofcom license. That is strictly just for uh, commercial terrestrial radio stations. It um, doesn't fall in the same jurisdiction as online internet-based radio. So Ofcom is not needed unless you wanted to turn your online station into a DAB station or, or FM station in the future. Um, yeah, I did mention it a little bit earlier. I, I'm not in the right um play or really sort of I because I'm I don't personally or rather radio.co doesn't deal personally with licensing we're in no place to really give our opinions on uh the, the regulations for licensing so um I would say maybe if your station was completely private for a small workforce my honest opinion would be it may not be necessary but again I have absolutely no right to say that any any queries about licensing should be addressed directly with the licensing organizations so I would get in touch with PRS and PPL and just see what they say. Uh, it may be because it's private, you pay a different kind of license or you pay the same license as everyone else. But get in contact with your licensing organization and they will tell you everything that you need to know. Uh, and again, if you go on our blog, type in licensing and uh, yeah, you'll find uh, some uh, some great information there. Um, uh, so uh, Terry as well, you've, you've also asked, thanks Terry for asking again, uh, can I use radio.co to schedule intros for uh, segments? Um, yes, you can. Uh, so when you're building playlists, um, you know, fill them with, um, you know, intros, outros, jingles, ads, maybe. Um, it's totally up to you. You just basically build the, the package and then just tell the software what time you want it to play. Um, if you wanted to schedule a particular intro or outro either side of a live show, you could build a playlist um, as an intro that's at least one minute long, fill that with your at least minute long intro or compilation, then go live and then do the same when you finish. Or when you're doing a live show, just press play on a file that's saved on your computer and that, uh, that should be able to do the same job. So I hope that's um, answered your question. Uh, DJ Smooth, can I share the web player to Facebook? Uh, you can. However, Facebook are a little bit tight on that. Um, you have to have uh, follow certain criteria before you can do that. So 
Um, for example, it must be a fan page and you must have at least 2000 fans, I believe, even if your radio station isn't one that's necessary to have fans, you know, particularly if it's like a business um, uh, uh, station. But yeah, you have to have at least 2000 fans, I believe. This may have changed recently, but I believe it's 2000 fans. Uh, but you should be able to take that web player embed code uh, when you are from within radio.co and then embed that onto Again, I believe it's a particular area of your fan page. Um, I think we have got a guide on it. Um, so, yeah, if you go to our, our, our help.radio.co, type in Facebook, uh, there is actually um, an add your player to Facebook uh, help guide, which will explain a bit more. Uh, also, just try and find it on Facebook as well. They'll probably have more information. But, uh, yeah, yes, it is 2,000 fans first. That's all. Um, cool TLC. Can I use an iPad to upload files or does it have to be a laptop or computer? Uh, no, you can use an iPad, um, uh, an Android tablet, mobile phone, even. Um, the only thing to, to make you aware of is that radio.co software isn't optimized for mobile devices. So that would mean there would be a considerable amount of, you know, zooming in, zooming out and moving around to really do it. But, uh, yes, you can just, as long as the files that you have are saved onto your iPad or tablet, um, yeah, just upload the files through that way. I would say if you want smoother control of your station, like, you know, you want to, um, you know, schedule a couple of shows, build a couple of playlists. My advice would be to perhaps use a, a, a laptop just for a bit more ease of use. But, um, you know, one of our tech guys, Lawrence, he actually, I think he uses exclusively his, his, his iPad for broadcasting his station, uh, his iPad Pro, and he doesn't seem to have any um, any issues with it. So, uh, yeah, you can, um, but you may find using a, a laptop or computer a bit, um, bit easier. And again, you don't have to have a particularly powerful computer or not, just, just uh, any average one uh will uh, will do um let's have a look uh, as well uh, and mac has asked uh, does it work in liberia um i couldn't say 100 percent um there are certain countries where our software doesn't work not not because our software isn't available there it's because i think i believe our billing um software that we use is uh things is linked to paypal i think in some countries um you know obviously uh, of restricted against use of PayPal. So I think maybe on the billing side, there will be some things that will stop you um, accessing it. Um, but the software itself should work as far as I'm aware in pretty much everywhere in the world. But again, if you do encounter an issue um, or you're unable to set it up, do get in touch and we'll, we'll try and clarify that for you. Um, Doug has asked, can I take live calls on my show? Um, yes, you can, Doug. And I've actually got, if I just move on to my Next little slide here. Um, you'll actually see a little one at the um, at the bottom there. So um, um, for, for questions such as that, it's a really, really great way of speaking to, uh, of, of finding out a bit more information about um, kind of pretty much anything to do with, with, with online radio, not just our software, you know, just radio in general, is actually subscribe to our radio.co YouTube channel and our founder, James Mulvaney's YouTube channel, because I have some fantastic um, guides about, you know, monetization seven ways to make money on your station, uh, a guide on even to see how you can create your own mobile apps, which is incredibly easy to do. Um, and there's one here, obviously, you just mentioned here, Doug, is how to take callers live on your radio station. Um, again, this is quite straightforward to do. You could use, um, I mean, in fact, the, the the options that James sort of goes through there, the simplest way uh, is, is called, it's called the down and dirty way, but this is pretty down and dirty but still reliable is people just hold a um, yeah mobile phone up to their microphone you know like so they just hold it up and you may think well that's not going to sound too good if people call you through whatsapp whatsapp produces a much higher much richer sound quality than um, than a typical phone so that is also that's a good little production tip to have there um, but yeah just hold your phone up to your microphone you can plug your mobile phone or tablet into a mixing desk and um, just fade it in and fade it out of course that it does require people to actually call your mobile phone. Uh, there's also software called, um, you know, Clean Feed, which will do something similar. Uh, and also, I mentioned our talk show um, feature. It's even though it's pre-recorded, still get callers to join you on there. But if you watch that video again on, um, it's on our Radio.co YouTube channel. Take callers live on your radio station. James goes through about four different. Um, uh, sort of instructions there for you. Uh, and then if you want to just find out how to make the most of your brand and your company, um, James has done obviously a series of fantastic videos here. Uh, this was actually a, 
a four-part series, how to build your personal brand, uh, particularly here, part one concept. Um, it goes through various ways to really make the most of your business and, again, make the most of this fantastic, always growing audio platform that is radio and podcasting. Uh, and speaking of, we've also got a guide here about podcasting for radio stations. There's another webinar uh, that me and my podcaster co-colleague Daryl did. Um, and yeah, this is just talking about how to take your online radio content and either and make it available for people all over the world on many different platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It just opens up potentially millions of ears listening to your station who otherwise uh, wouldn't have done. Uh, and as well, as I said, just as a reminder, if you go to podcast.co, uh, look at our business plan, you can find out more information about our private podcasts um, as well, which is which is a great tool to have. Um, I've just got a couple of minutes uh, left, and that's all the questions I have so far. Let me just scour um, through um, and just see if there is uh, any more information here. Um, uh, generic Null has asked, what was the software that was for payment processing for charging two subscriptions? Um, can you place links to the software in the summary of this video? Um, I guess I should really ask Jack, can you do that for me? <laughs> because Jack's sort of manning everything in the background. Uh, yeah, the company in particular that we recommend just because we've used it in the past is called DPD. Um, I can't remember exactly what it, um, Digital Product Delivery, I think it stands for. Um, but DPD. Um, Delta, Papa Delta. Um, and yeah, so James has got a great guide about how that works. So you can find it on our blog by just typing in charge and you'll find it. But uh, yeah, I'm sure um, if um, if uh, Jack finds it, we'll, we'll pop it in the um, in the comments section here for you, for you to find. Um, so yeah, so, so that's that's a good one to set up. It goes through exactly how it works and, you know, and how to incorporate um, radio.co into it. And, oh yeah, so yeah, Jack's done it there. So there's a website here get dpd.com so um in there so i hope that uh, that helps uh lisa has asked actually fresh question here uh, may we stream live on uh on youtube um yes you can not directly through us you do need to use alternative software um notably something like what we're using right now called Streamyard. um i'm just streaming live across various platforms but also youtube and uh, you know facebook live as well um even things like um uh, obs as well uh, a very popular very easy uh, software to, uh, to to use uh, but that's just a great um that very easy simple to use and you that will allow you now to broadcast um online through your radio.co station but also uh, YouTube and Facebook Live. One word of warning, though, uh, or a few rather, um, if you do plan to play copyright material, like you're playing music, you will most likely find that your um, your feed may get cut or, or muted, uh, you know, when you're just taken off air. And you won't be taken off air through us, but you will be taken off air to your YouTube and Facebook audience because they are not... Um, uh, they are not covered for for licensing really so uh you know they will cut your feed i believe the only way to get that approved is to contact record labels directly and get them to to notify facebook i believe i think someone has told me that 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 has worked in the um uh in the past so that's something that's that's worth knowing but if it's just talk content you should have absolutely no problems and it just opens up potential for new audiences as well across youtube you know people are obviously all on youtube all day every day just adds potentially new pair of eyes um, to to get on there. Um, yes, and I was incorrect, uh, horrifically incorrect about the audio hijack. I don't know where I got five pound from. Thank you to uh, DJ Mackie Hype, who says audio hijack is thirty nine dollars. Uh, yeah, and just reconfirming that uh, yes, it is exclusively for uh, Mac. So yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, and uh, Terry as well as asked and um, uh, cool TLC. Don't know if you're the same person, but you've asked a very similar question. Maybe, um, do you use screen reading software? Um, you know, and, and ultimately, is our software compatible um, for uh, blind and visually impaired? Um, currently, and uh, not uh, unfortunately, um, but it is something that we are hoping to implement in in the future to make it compatible with with screen readers. So, uh, so unfortunately, the answer is no, but it is something that we are aware of, and we are uh, we will. Um, you know, sort of discuss and, and hopefully try and implement in the future. Although there is no um, ETA on that, uh, unfortunately. Um, let me see. Let me just scour through. Maybe is um, any more particular questions uh, I've got here? I've got literally got a, a minute left. Um, Samalog, I'm going through. I think I actually 
asked all the questions that I can see at the moment. I'm getting a little a little nudge from uh, from Jack in the background that uh, we must wrap this up. But uh, yeah, no, thank you very much for for joining me, guys, for this uh, for this webinar. I do hope um, it has been incredibly helpful. I said the main focus of it, it was how to build radio stations for your business, specifically private ones. And it is ultimately possible to do for both just for your workforce um, and for, um, you know, your businesses, you know, to get audiences and customers worldwide. The software that we build is incredibly user friendly and intuitive. So even around a busy nine to five job managing a workforce not much time and effort really needs to be spent in keeping it um, on air. And if you want more great information, you can always visit our website. You will find tons of articles, guides, and university um, information. And also, as I said here, if you subscribe to the radio.co and James Mulvaney's uh, YouTube channels, always updating tons of great information there that you'll find really helpful about every single aspect of online radio and podcasting um so that's enough for, for me guys thank you very much for joining me once again if you have missed any of this don't worry it will be available to stream on demand uh, as soon as i finish talking so i best do that finish talking uh thank you very much guys and uh, yeah if you have any more questions any more information head to radio.co or send me an email at studio at radio.co take care and hope to uh, speak to you soon Starting a radio station has never been easier. Click here and I'll take you to a free guide which shows you exactly how you can start a radio station with minimal fuss, no technical headaches, plus also start getting those all important listeners. How does that sound? Click here and I will take you to my free guide.